Welcome back, everybody. We are talking about this is the wellness topic tonight, um, understanding holistic health paradigm. Um, so we're going to talk about what this means and and um, how it applies to you and everything. So we'll just go ahead and get right into it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Ben. Here's Jade Baldwin. Yeah, yes. Uh, thank you, Ben, for putting this together and uh, helping us with all the tech support. Um, and I'm really grateful to have Ben uh, because we we bounce ideas off each other and we are on the same um, page as far as health is concerned. So I'm really grateful that you know when we have a problem, a health problem, we always look for the holistic approach to take care of our health problems. So now I just want to say something about and Jade's going to get into a little bit more about the holistic approach. This is we're not saying anything uh, like about the traditional and by traditional approach, I mean the doctors and, mm -hmm. and medicine and everything. There's a place for those things. Yes. Um, it's, it's sometimes when people give up their, um, you know, their ability to take care of their own um, or responsibility to take care of their own health. And they, yeah. they put that responsibility on the doctors and stuff. Yeah. Um, and or just rely on um, yeah, the doctors will appreciate if you take responsibility yeah. back yep yes. so we're not saying like um don't, don't trust your doctor and stuff there's a place for those sorts of things and, yep yeah mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll, we'll explain more about yeah. this um mm -hmm. so topic the topic here. is understanding the holistic health paradigm and um how it helps you heal and elevate your life so in the past many many civilizations understood and respected and trusted in the self-healing powers of the body. Okay, so we can read Hippocrates says, natural forces within us are the true healers. Okay, that's pretty clear. Um, so people understood the connection between the physical body and the emotional body. So this is what we mean when we speak about holistic health. Okay, sometimes people throw words out there and we just have to explain what we really mean. So that means we take care of our whole body, mind and spirit anytime we want to address any illness or disease. Okay, so our friend Deepak Chopra says, uh, we know that the mind and body are parallel universes. Anything that happens in the mental universe must leave tracks in the physical one. So you already know, people are like, well, I don't get this. I use the example of, you know, stress or something. When someone's stressed and they're tense and they're wound up so tightly, of course, their body's going to vibrate, um, you know, the same way. And, of course, over time, their physical body will manifest symptoms, okay? And um, symptoms of stress. So, of course, it's linked. And that universe is parallel. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. Okay, so I um, want to say we need a paradigm shift, okay? A paradigm shift is needed. So there's two wellness philosophies or paradigms. So the first one is symptom management. Okay, this is how we've been taught to take care of our health. And the second is our holistic approach paradigm. Okay, so there's the two paradigms that we're talking about and they're very different. Um, and if we understand it, then, you know, things are clearer to you, I hope. Okay, so the holistic approach encourages personal responsibility for yourself. Okay, so holistic health is about what we, what and how we eat, drink, how we move, how we sleep, what we think, what we feel. That's holistic. Okay, um, so it has been that way for an ancient approach in many, many worlds. I know my, my friends are Chinese, they were over in London, um, and they were saying, um, yeah, you know, in they, they're, if they're sick in China or Taiwan, they would take, go to their herbal doctor and take their pulse and then figure out what. The chi, mm -hmm. uh, whatever energy, they balance it up. And I think, great. And then they use herbs to fix it. Okay. And unless it's a super acute problem, they, they take this holistic approach all the time. That's the first go-to. So they still have that in lots of countries. Okay, 
So in the world today, the symptom management paradigm is, is dominant. Okay, this approach of health um, makes it difficult for us to completely get back to optimal health and most of us don't even realize it. So we are not victims of our DNA. People have said, oh, you know, that's my, I have a marker or I have a gene. Um, they keep, they, you know, they say that. But over 20 years ago, they've proven that the DNA does not um, dictate our, who we are. Okay, that's really interesting. So that's um, uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton and read his work. Okay, but what we can do, there's, there's so much more we can do. Okay, um, instead of arguing for that, just find this, um, just listen to this and see if this makes more sense. Okay, so this approach causes people to feel um, only little responsibility for their health and life in general. So if you have a certain problem, sometimes you think, oh, I have to, I have this for life. Okay, I have to manage it for life. And that's not the case. A lot of times when I meet certain people and they choose to heal, they choose to own their power, things shift for them and they don't have that problem anymore. And these people that have that symptom management uh, paradigm, they, they're shocked. What? Really? Okay, you can heal? Okay. So these people think that maybe other people are lucky. Um, they have time, they have support, they have money and all things that they have. That's why they have good health. It's outside of your control, right? No, it's not actually. So um, if you believe this, then subconsciously you've adopted the world's philosophy of health. Okay, that means we're giving away our power, we're feeling helpless and hopeless. So if we uh, recognize the world's philosophy, you know, which we may have subconsciously adopted, we will be able to change our health. So we're not victims, um, but powerful creators of our reality. We can control the power of subconscious and change not only our health, but our lives. So I, you know, I know that people that say, no, 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 that's not true. I see that they don't, they haven't even tried to take control of their, their health. Okay. So you can't bag it out if you haven't tried it. All right. So for me, my life has changed and I live a life that I've, you know, wanted to live and, and it's just happening more and more and more. And so we, we get to live that life. Um, so, you know, try it guys and see. So instead of focusing on the symptoms for a quick fix comfort, um, you know, we need to look inwards into our power within to heal and find happiness. Um, so people often look into books and so-called experts, um, you know, because they don't feel like they understand their life uh, or their health. So they, they hand that responsibility over to the specialists or the experts. And many times um, the qu quick, cheap fix is temporary and then the problems and discomforts reappear causing the sick cycle to repeat. But most of the time the problem gets bigger and bigger and worse and worse. So if I take my allergies, for example, uh, the allergies I had, okay, I should reword that carefully. Um, I had the allergies to 30 things. It was ridiculous. I know it's 30 things because we listed it. And every time, you know, we manage it. After three months, I have to switch my drugs, switch my drugs. And then, you know, you go to the, the doctors again and they say, hey, guess what? You are allergic to this other thing too. And it just adds to that list. And you think, ah, I'm not getting better. I'm getting worse. What's happening? So anyways, this is kind of fun. It reminds me of a book, and then this is a fun, fun book, guys. It's called A Bad Case of Stripes um, by David Shannon. And we, we read this book to our kids when they were little. It's a children's book. It's a yeah. children's book. It's funny. It's comical. It's about a little girl who adopts everyone else's opinions and ideas, and it gets her into a big mess. So, you know, she starts growing fur and just got stripes and you know, spots and things because she just kind of, she doesn't think for herself, right? She doesn't allow herself to be truly happy. It's a good ending too. Um, anyways, it's it, one of my favorite children's books, but it reminds me of this because they sought the specialists, they sought all those people that just don't know her. And, um, you know, and then at the end of the, time, the, the book, she was getting worse and worse, <laughs> not getting better. And uh, one lady said, well, what do you like? And she actually likes 
um, this lima beans. lima beans. You know, that's what she likes, but she was afraid to tell people because that's who she is. And so the lady said, well, okay, well, I'll just put these lima beans away. And then she's like, no, no. After all that's happened, she's like, this can't make anything worse. But, and what happened was she became herself again. So, because she honored herself and she took back her power. So that was just a fun um, book to help the children see that they can, you know, not have to worry about um, uh, adopting because sometimes we adopt all these paradigms without even thinking, okay? We adopt that our bodies are broken, we don't even think. So anyways, um, so likewise, the holistic paradigm is, um, you know, it helps us find um, how, um, find more happiness and um, more health for ourselves, okay? Okay, so this is, um, I, I put this picture together because I remember, I think of the holistic health like this. So it's, it's a picture of the, your check engine light, right? Seriously? All right, you know, and then it's just band-aid. So uh, the symptom management uh, approach focuses on reducing the discomforts of symptoms. It, uh, its main purpose is to be symptom-free or not be bothered by those symptoms anymore. So say that you've got a headache, you take a pill and that pill should stop your head from feeling. So now, good, that solved it, really? Mm. <laughs> no, the pain is still there, but your brain communication receptors are interrupted and it can't get those signals anymore. So it can't tell you that you're in pain. Um, so is the real problem gone? No. Okay, but... Um, you know, we don't have to think about it for now. Okay, so sometimes it, it's, it's, it has its place. Okay, so I tell people it's sort of a dangerous way of approaching health because it's sort of like putting a, a sticker or a Band-Aid over your check engine light, okay, in your car and hoping that it will repair itself or fix it. Just, just ignore it. Um, we don't do that for our vehicles, but we do that for our bodies. Okay, so, hey, got a problem, let's just mask it up. Okay, now it's gone, bye-bye. No. <laughs> okay, it's still there. Is everybody get it? Any questions or comments? Anything anybody wants to say at this point? Okay. I could just say that um, we didn't have the luxury, we went to the specialist and nothing worked and they didn't know what to do. So we had to look for something different. But on the other hand, it's kind of lucky because when the oils helped, they took note because they had to and, you know, they were amazed and accepted it. But, you know, it's the same thing whether it's working or, or you're just not dealing with it. Um, you know, it's the same thing. We kept on saying, well, this isn't really helping. It's just a Band-Aid. And then when it wasn't working, you know, what's the answer? So how do you, you know, even before we got to that point, we were like, well, what is the problem? Where's the, where, how is the problem going away? You know, nobody really could tell us that. So that's something I share over and over is that when you're taking a medication, unless it's something, you know, is it really doing away with everything and, the, and where it's coming from? Is it like addressing the root cause? Helping the source, yeah. The source, or is it just Covered. fixing all the rest of its stuff? Yeah, that's that's a big question. Yeah, yeah. So we just to think about it for you know a little bit, just to see where we're we heading with this. That's all. Okay. So we're encouraging people to have like a proactive um, health approach. Okay. So why is symptom management a problem? So the first thing is it, um, it causes people to be passively, um, you know, passive instead of um, proactive. Okay, we, when we're passive, we give away our power, okay? And we think that our body is broken by chance, um, that it spontaneously malfunctions. Um, so if we just close our eyes, ignore it, um, you know, manage the symptoms, it'll go away. Or someone else's. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the doctor's responsibility. Yeah, and um, you know, being there and um, being uh, totally unsatisfied, and you know, at the end of the day, it's because I I refuse to um, be responsible for myself. Um, so, if we just think about it, 
you know, God didn't give us illness just for to torment us <laughs> for his entertainment. Okay, there's, um, you know, I think there's a lot of things that we can learn from um, what we're going through. Okay, so if people tell me, Jay, what um, oil for this health problem? What oil for this health problem? So what they're asking me is, do you have a substitute for a, a pill for an ill? Okay, so that tells me still that they're still um, operating from that symptom management. Um, or they want exact recipe. Okay, how many drops of this oil for this one problem? They're still um, operating from the symptom management. They're not, they're not looking at what the problem is, what am I learning from that problem, and why I'm using these oils. I know this is kind of deep, but um, as you use the oils, you get to this level, okay? I've met a few people that go, yeah, I'm totally here already. And other people are like, wait, my head's still, you know, spinning because it's a lot of information that I'm not used to, okay? And so, I think it's hard for some people to accept that there's no, they can't say, if you have this problem, then you take this oil. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, this oil will work for those general things, but yeah. Everybody's different, so mm -hmm. that's why you know we don't have like okay, just try this oil if you have a cough. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to find out what the problem is, why you have it, and um, there's six oils you could try. Mm -hmm. Um, all of them have similar so properties. Works. One might work for you, and it might not work for you. So there's a bit of trial error, mm -hmm. getting to know yourself, getting to know the the oils, mm -hmm. and so very different. You gotta from, be thinking. You know, <laughs> going to your cupboard and say, oh. This one's cough. Yep. Or something but you like do that. pay a price. You do pay a price when you have the synthetics, okay, because you have a negative effect as well as some effect that you, you were looking for. So the second problem is that um, sometimes we start to settle and stop trying to permanently heal. So a lady that I was speaking to this afternoon, she said to me, um, you know, after she'd cleansed and um, she felt better, she says, well, wow, because I, I thought that was normal. What I felt before was normal. And then she said, I went back to eating a few junk foods and, you know, oily, fatty foods. And she said, I felt so sick. And she said, I realized that it wasn't that I felt super sick um, now and I wasn't sick before. She said, I was like that all the time. And that was my norm. That was the sick feeling I always had. And she felt like that was normal. And now when her body um, responded to this in the same way it used to, she recognized the difference. So she stopped settling and she feels like she can still keep going and improving her health. Um, so she's looking forward to doing this. She's looking forward to doing that. And I was just really proud of her for seeing that there's more. Okay. So many people just allow themselves to be taken over by the discomforts uh, and inconvenience of sickness. Or they seek the help from specialists and experts. Um, and because somehow, you know, we're not smart enough. So the symptom management um, paradigm teaches people that, look, this is too complicated. You're not smart enough. Don't even bother. Um, so, you know, they go, no, no, let me check with my doctor. No, no, no. Um, I get that. But there's so much you can do um, for yourself. Okay, uh, so they simply add more toxins to their cells the more drugs they take. Um, and we often get sicker and sicker and more toxic. And that's all. So, and then they decide that this is as good as it gets, you know, and allow themselves to feel down and dumpy and just accept it. Um, so that's the, the, the problem that I see with the symptom management. Um, and then the third thing is we don't change. Okay, so there's, there is a good reason for our experience of suffering and disease. There is a good reason. Everything helps us change. So when my shoulders hurt too much, I know I'm carrying more than I need to. When, you know, leg problems, knee problems, it helps me change. Okay, so this is a learning opportunity. It's not something inconvenient that you think, oh, just get rid of it quickly and, you know, move on. All right, if we do that, then I promise you, that this problem will be re on repeat. It'll be set for repeat until you get it. <laughs> and you don't want Groundhog's Day over and over. And you know friends, you know people that are like that, don't you? You see people have the same problems over and over and you think, wow, she's just attracting it. 
or because she hasn't or he hasn't decided to change and learn from it. Okay. So when Ben was um, um, got a job in a law firm um, seven hours south of Sydney, you know, I was thinking, no, I'm not going to go. You go. Um, and then I started getting knee problems. I've never had knee problems before. And then I felt like, wait a minute, I need to resolve this. Which oils do I need for this? And then the oil, uh, winter green came up and winter green is about surrender. So I thought, oh, you know, I might be very stiff necked or something. And you know, my knees is not, are not bending and not flexible. So I thought, okay, I'm going to be flexible. I'm going to change. My pain went away. Okay. And that was immediate. So, you know, if I leave it, leave it, leave it, I can see like years and years of discomfort in the knees. And what am I going to do? Get a new knee? It's ridiculous. So this is an awesome opportunity to change. And you are happier at the end when you've changed. It's all for your good anyways. Okay. So the fourth thing is um, with the symptom management is we're not treated as individuals. Okay. It's like, this pill, this recipe, this remedy, this is how it is for, for people. Um, so we're treated all and the same and then we have these negative side effects because we're so different. Sometimes, um, you know, pharmaceuticals are tested, uh, you know, with a couple of hundred people and maybe a thousand if they're rich and then it's given to millions and millions of people. And so there's so many variants and then, you know, we've got so many different side effects, okay? Okay, so, um, you know, we are different humans. And sometimes people say, well, what's exactly how many oils of which um, for kids and how many drops for, you know what, if you're talking about um, an environmental threat on your skin, your toes or something, you caught something from um, getting a pedicure, right? You can use one or two drops of, um, what is it, uh, Melissa, it might do the trick. But if you're going to use, um, you know, two drops of Melaleuca, it may not do the trick. You need 10 drops. You see some different oils do different jobs and you might need more of a certain oil. Okay, so that it's different. Um, so I know that Abuvite is stronger than Melaleuca in certain ways. You need more drops of Melaleuca to equal the same amount of um, benefits as Abuvite sometimes, right? So th there's a difference right there in the, the oils and let alone you and your, your individual needs. So again, um, it's quite safe to practice and play with the oils and, and see which one works for you. One time it might work in this way, another time it might work in another way. Okay, so those are the four main things that I feel like, um, you know, are the issues of um, symptom management. So I have a little picture here to help you kind of have a, a good idea of um, what I'm talking about. Um, does anyone want to say anything? I don't want to just keep talking and talking. Any comments or? So, I can, yeah, I just I summarized can, it. Yep. I'll go ahead and read this for, you, for those who are, are just listening to us tonight. So, wellness philosophy. So, symptom management, way of looking at it is your body is prone to break down and spontaneous malfunctions. Holistic approach is your body is intelligent and knows how to heal. Imbalances is the cause of disease, okay? Symptom management is manage and mask symptoms for immediate comfort. Holistic approach is use symptoms as clues to identify the imbalances even though it may be uncomfortable at first. So symptom management approach is seek answers from the outside for immediate resolution, whereas the holistic approach is seek answers from within for permanent peace, enlightenment, and fulfillment. Symptom management approach is adding more toxins to stop symptoms and current discomfort. And the holistic approach is reduce toxins, cleanse, and allow the cells to communicate better. Symptom management approach, the last one here, is similar malfunctions and patterns repeat often, Groundhog's Day. And the holistic approach is a permanent change. Where your heart is opened and healed and lessons learned in your body. 
So that's the best little diagram we have here, They're comparing symptom management. So uh, does that make sense to, to you guys? Approach. Yeah, we've got some head nodding. Here. Good, okay. All right. Okay, so in my opinion, the holistic approach is the best way. Um, we have Dr. Bernard Jensen here, he says, we don't catch disease, we create them by breaking down natural defenses according to the way we eat, drink, think, and live. And I can't agree more with him, okay? So if we continue to be stubborn in our ways, um, our body uh, will try to get our attention sooner or later. Um, and eventually, if we ignore it, um, disease will happen. If you look at the word disease, it means dis-ease, okay, or not balance in some way, somehow, okay? Uh, so the good thing is sometimes when we reach rock bottom with our disease, uh, we're forced to stop and stay still for a moment. And, you know, I call it the perfect storm, right? This perfect storm moment, we find some aha. I know that when I was super sick, you know, I, I've gone back to the doctors and gone back and gone back. And then I got sicker and sicker. And when I was just done, I was sick and tired of being sick and miserable, um, you know, and you re reach that rock bottom, it's actually a blessing because you think it can't get any lower than this. Something has to change, right? And um, then you think, I want to change. I'm going to do something different. And then it causes some change in yourself. Because in the past, it was always blaming, oh, you know, I wish the doctors knew what to do. Maybe it's another bacterial infection. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. It's always out there. But here, the yeah, answer is within. And um, it was awesome. So I know a lot of people that have hit rock bottom and found, you know, aha moments. You know, we know that the Harry Potter series written by J.K. Rowling, she hit rock bottom. And then it, it was aha and then it was amazing so i felt that way too with my life so since that point things have just gone up because you can't go any lower than bottom right okay so this is why this is awesome so we have essential oils to help us okay so i really appreciate essential oils because it's intelligent and it's natural okay so you can do um use essential oils to help with your mind body and spirit and all those levels Okay, so I recommend everyone do your smell test. So you can smell the oils, which one do you not like? And then, you know, figure it out. Do you have the um, emotions and essential oil book? And you can look at that. And you can just figure out what it is that um, you need to change, right? Before um, you have a bigger physical manifestation of a health problem. <clears throat> so I'll take a uh, spike nut uh, to give you an example. So spike nut is a, um, a historical oil that has been used to anoint bodies and things. It's like um, the frankincense. It's like a cousin to frankincense. It does a lot of things. Um, but anyways, when I first smelled spike nut, it wasn't very pleasant at all. It was kind of stinky, actually. And then I learned um, what it was for emotionally, right? And it was about... Um, gratitude and it was more than just um, being grateful uh, for things it's being grateful for trials and grateful for opportunities um, you know that you get given you don't ask for it it just happens <laughs> so just take it right um, sometimes it's uncomfortable but appreciate it anyways um, so even if it's like a, a conflict in your, your friendship or something and you think oh my goodness um, you look at that and you resolve, why am I so annoyed? Why is she annoyed? And, you know, and change it. And when you change, the oil smells nicer um, or you wish things were different and then this is not working out the way I want to. Take whatever that opportunity is and use that as a learning experience. And when you smell that oil again and it smells nice, your body starts to relax. Your body starts to produce those happy chemicals, your oxytocin, your nitric acid, uh, oxide, dopamine, endorphins. And guess what? Your whole body starts to heal. So, you know, healing on the emotion side is healing on the physical side too. And the world looks different and your lessons learned 
And from now on, I say thank you to everything, to opportunities, to trials and stuff. So I've learned that lesson, okay? So if you are not aware, your body will talk to you anyways, okay? And so we have an incredible um, body that will talk to you and it's, it's very literal. The body is very literal. So, you know, take, um, so I tell people all the time, your body's talking to you and are you listening? Okay, so we take the legs, Okay, what does the legs do? Uh, what do the legs do? So the legs take us places, help us move forward. Okay, uh, the neck, if we have neck problems, that's uh, because we're not looking at things at, at different angles um, uh, and uh, approaching our problems in a different way. Um, so sometimes if our neck or our shoulders or legs, our body gives us um, some pains and hints Take it, take that hint quickly before it becomes a big problem. Okay, so if we say, I've got a discomfort in my, my gut, and then you ignore it, right, your gut might be bloated, you might feel more nauseous, and if you continue to ignore it, you might be throwing up, and you're forced to stop, and you're forced to look at what is happening to you, and um, then you can change, okay? So you can say, hey, that was anxiety, I just let it, let it go. So Jade, um, let's say someone does have a sort of a pain in mm -hmm. some area of the body. How do they know what that relates to? Okay. What makes sense to them? Yeah, or? yeah. I, you know, there's a wonderful book called um, Feelings Buried Alive, Never Die. That's a good book to start with. You can just reference it. Uh, reference, say, you know, I've got knee problems, leg problems. Just look it up and, and see what um, what makes sense to you, mm -hmm. okay? And it's usually very um, insightful. Um, Any other um, sort of books like that? Um, yep, and we do have the Louise Hay, You Can Hear Your Life. That's a good one too. Mm -hmm. And we have a book list. You look uh, up the body part, uh -huh. or the uh, ailment, and see mm -hmm. what it might mean emotionally yep. or Yeah, and as you, as you um, heal, um, you will actually, you, I not, don't need to reference those books anymore. For me, I just, I can intuitively know now. When I look at things, I think, oh, okay, so this is what it's about. Um, you get used to it. So you will actually read it very quickly. Okay. So um, many people don't realize that they can heal from many diseases because what the diseases are is just a name. Um, and underneath that is just a list of symptoms. So if you check the symptoms, um, then you have that disease. If you um, don't have those symptoms anymore, that disease actually goes away. Okay, so it's awesome. But I want to remind everyone not to own that label. It's very important that you don't own that label. So you have to say to yourself, I'm healing from a diagnosis of whatever that problem is, okay? Um, don't say my allergy, my diabetes. diabetes. Yeah, cancer. and then what's worse, I feel, is when people celebrate it. You know, um, I had a friend that had endometriosis, and there's endo day, endo, you know, awareness, and all these things. Um, yeah, but uh, you know, we don't have flu day. I'm a flu survivor. You know, it just doesn't make sense. It's still another sickness. <laughs> so you see, it's like. Uh, you know, my mom had cancer, I get it, but we don't just say, let's, you know, cancer awareness day, I get it, but um, there's just something about it that I just don't, it doesn't set, sit well, it doesn't sit well with me. Um, you know, we got over it, we learned our lesson, move, move forward, mm -hmm. yeah. And some people, um, it sounds funny, but some people are uh, relieved to get a diagnosis. Yeah. Like, oh, I finally found out what's wrong with me. I am diabetic or I am yeah. such and such a yeah. disease. Yeah. Um, and, and then they're like, okay, wow. So I'm like in the in crowd or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I forget who, who was it told the story about that where this, this girl, she was oh, ecstatic. Dr. She, she, she finally got diagnosed with diabetes and now she's going to be like her mom and her aunt and everybody yeah, well, she felt included at that point because everybody else has been diagnosed with this disease and that's and, all they talk about yeah and she's she, part of their identity she felt like now she's 
belongs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, the problem was that, that, you know, if, if, if it means that so much for her, then she's probably not going to Let heal go from it yeah. because she needs that. Mm -hmm. She needs that disease for, you know, to feel included. Mm -hmm. But if she thought about it and, you know, she separated, okay, this is the disease, this is the need I have, the emotional need, find other ways to, mm -hmm. to meet that need. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's very important. So when I work with people, sometimes I help them identify because they just need that love and attention. Um, and, you know, you can get love and attention from other things that is positive. It doesn't have to be the negative. Okay, so we detach ourselves from the disease and it's no longer there. Um, so just, just be aware of that, guys. So help your body get rid of symptoms and then you get rid of the disease. Okay. So in conclusion, um, I, it's, it's an immense relief and it's very liberating to take that holistic approach to identify the root causes of your health. You feel very empowered. Uh, you feel very accomplished. You feel very um, satisfied that you did it yourself. Okay. That you've uh, understood yourself. But then at the end of the day, you are happier because you found your path, you found your passion, and your life is more fulfilled. Okay, so it's not just about the physical ailments and pains and symptoms. It's, it's you, all of you, your, your spirit, your mind, um, and your physical body will come along with th that journey. Okay. Now, we have plenty of time, guys. If you want to ask questions or um, make comments, you're welcome to. I just plowed through that really quickly. <laughs> okay, we have some written comments. I'm a flu survivor. Yeah, that is funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And sometimes people do, you know, find a lot of. You know, the um, Louise Hay book, um, Heal Your Life and Heal Your Body. It's funny because when I started to look at some of the pain that I had, I mean, she even has like a diagram of your spine. And, you know, she was pointing out some of the things. And when you read it, you can see exactly what's going on. And you're, you know, you don't ever look at the emotion part and that was a lot of what you know some that have just hearing this for the first time that is an eye opener that some of the disease that we have and the discomfort isn't necessarily physical because of that reason it, it's coming from these emotions like you were saying and louise hayes like her things have been spot on for anything that was going on. It doesn't matter if it was like your neck, inflammation, um, all these different things. So it's really, you know, a holistic thing to look at everything and to look at, you know, get the book and see what is this area, what what is going on there emotionally, and the um, the book Essential Oils and Emotions. You know, all those things. When you really want to get better, you start looking at the big picture. And then you're amazed to see about yourself. Like you, you know what's going on, but you don't really realize that that is contributing to your illness or your ailment. And, and so when you look at it that way and you see the whole picture, you understand why you're using oils for the pain, but why you're using it for that emotion that is contributing to that pain or that ailment. And so I really found great comfort in that full understanding of your, your body fully and listening to it and, you know, deciphering all of that. Um, it takes a little bit, but it's really not hard. Like you just look it up in the book and bam, it's right there, you know, and then just using the oils for some time until you see the change and you notice that it doesn't smell the way it once did. And, you know, you just start to overcome it. It's just um, really amazing to look at your whole self that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. There's things in there that you can't find, like eyebrow <coughs> eyebrow problems. <laughs> so um, I had to kind of figure that one out. Hi, Debbie. Because um, <clears throat> I, I saw had some, you know, once in a while I get a zit right on my eyebrow. And I thought to myself, what's that about? 
And I think quite lately I've been thinking, I'm not smart enough. And eyebrows are about wisdom, right? I'm more, okay, well, then I had to figure out that I am about as wise as I can be, you know, I'm okay. <laughs> so it's just interesting to kind of look at yourself because you're so used to um, reading your body now. And then, you know, when I clarify that with myself, I, you know, things go away. <laughs> and I'm like, that's good. Or, you know, if I have, um, shoulder problems I'm thinking I've let go of so much already what haven't I still let go of right I'm still carrying people things and um, right and then as I let things go and it feels like so much better I think yes I'm making progress um, otherwise you think okay well I'm still on this journey there's some more stuff I need to figure out and it's it's humbling isn't it yeah but I think once people figure that, that this is why um, we are sick, right? It helps them develop more faith, at least for me, because you just don't go through life and, and something spontaneously happens to you and you think, what? And, um, you know, and go, well, just take it away, take it away, quick, quick, quick. Right? I think, wait, 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 wait. God wants to tell me stuff. I need to learn stuff. Um, and He's very loving. And how cool is that? My personal lessons that come up here and there. And he's not in a rush for me to learn it because if I ignore it now, it comes back up. <laughs> right. Um, and, you know, that's why I think, okay, I am allowing myself to feel some discomforts and figure things out. I mean, sometimes we, when we talk about things, we cry and we, we get angry and we just get so upset. But we work through it. We keep working through it. Um, and then it's so liberating at the end. Yep, and it doesn't happen again. We don't repeat it. So I really appreciate that. Do you guys have any um, concerns or um, questions about mm -hmm. some of the health uh, problems that you might have and um, that you want us to help with? So let's see if I can summarize kind of what we've talked okay. about tonight before we, we close up. So we talked about um, holistic health as opposed to symptom management approach. Symptom management is, oh, you have some symptoms, so let's take care of the symptoms and quiet those symptoms so you can get on with life. But there's still an underlying, underlying um, health problem and that can have its roots in some emotional trauma or something else. And we talked about the holistic approach where we looked at, at you, you know, um, all holistically and, and um, you know, how you can approach that, whether, and you talked about, you know, with the class before, actually, you talked about with the Ylang Ylang, um, looking at, like, your past. You, maybe you have some trauma from your childhood that you need to um, bring up and, mm -hmm. and take care of. Uh, the other approach we talked about is, you know, you look at the body part that's hurting and try, trying to um, read the body and say, oh, you know what, my neck is hurting, maybe I'm being stubborn and maybe I need to see this from another point of view. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about looking at your life in that way and, and or thinking more like what is the root cause and dealing with that and using some uh, essential oils and um, other solutions to to dig that out um, mm -hmm. emotionally and um, you know so just you know you're you're stressed so you need to take some lavender to get to some sleep that's symptom management or yeah. you're you have a tummy ache you need to take some digestin to soothe your tummy mm -hmm. that's also symptom yeah. management mm -hmm. but maybe you're you're you got a tummy ache because um, you know something has arisen you're in your life. You're, you're stressed, and yeah. your stress is not because of external things. Maybe it's some mental yep. Yep. false belief you have. Yep. You believe that when these two things happen, then that doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. But if you think back, you know, and, and you fix that way of thinking, then your stress goes away, mm -hmm. and you no longer need the digestion. Yep. You can handle more yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's uh. That's the kind of um, sum, sum, to summarize that up. Um, holistic paradigm as opposed to you know, symptom management. Yeah, okay. So I have one more thing to add here. So you know people that uh, 
have a hard time absorbing nutrients or eating healthy foods. Um, you have full intentions to, but you self-sabotage. Um, that's because uh, we don't feel a healthy self-love. Okay, and our body repels, rejects, and do not assimilate good stuff. So, you know, I had a girlfriend that I was talking to, and I said, look, um, some people will have a hard time um, absorbing calcium, for example, because they don't feel, um, and they, they in that their personality is that they're not worthy or they're, um, they don't love themselves. And the girl just looked at me and said, yes, that's my mom. You know, they, they give her this calcium, but she just won't absorb it. And, um, you know, and she always thinks poorly of herself. And that's why I, I tell people, like, if you love and accept yourself, mm -hmm. you allow good stuff in, you allow your cells to assimilate goodness to good stuff too. Okay, so that's a, you know, it's another example of this. Because sometimes you keep on, you know, throwing that stuff in there and it's still, it doesn't help um so you do, you do really need that holistic approach yep but anyways that covers all the topic for tonight does yep. anybody have anything else they want to add to it all right well those who have joined us tonight will give you uh, a few you. moments um, we're gonna go ahead and, and wrap this up yep thank you again everybody who joined us on the call tonight really and those who are listening you. to this podcast or watching this on the, on the website or on YouTube later on. And we appreciate that. Um, and as always, if you do have any questions, even though you're watching this in the future, um, put your questions down at the bottom. There's, uh, you know, the, the um, it's, it's somewhere here. <laughs> there we go. There's a few questions there already. But there's a, there's a place for you to leave a question, and as you see, we'll we get in there. Or and make a comment. Yeah, or make a comment, or uh, share a story, or maybe, like, Jade's presented some ideas of um, different, um, um, like, ailments and, and what you could do if you have any of those. That's a good place to put it. Um, and thank you beforehand for um, doing that, and we will... Talk to you later. I'm going to go ahead and end the call. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks for joining us.